Hey folks, Glenn here and I've got a very, very quick video for you just to give you an update on a technique that I explained in episode 5 of my video podcast show. And that was the technique that gives that cartoon painterly look that you'll see on a lot of my pictures. Now I created the, the tutorial as part of that episode because it's a technique that I've been asked about a lot. So I thought I'd kind of show you that to give you an idea of how you do it. However, although I like that technique, there was always one thing I didn't like about it, and that was it kind of made the retouching workflow destructive. And what I mean by that is, once you'd actually done that effect, if you then carried on to do more retouching, you couldn't go backwards because it kind of created a full stop or a, a point in your retouching where you had a merged layer. So if you wanted to go back and change something way, way down the line, you had to undo loads and loads of steps. So that was the only sticking point that I didn't like about that particular workflow or that technique. So today I've come up with a new way of doing it, and it's actually a simpler way, a quicker way, but best of all, it's non-destructive. So I want to show you that now. So let's just jump over to Lightroom. Now this is a picture that I've used in a, another episode of the podcast, I think it was last week's, which was episode 7, where I showed how to add in the sky. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely head over and have a quick look at that. But I want to show you the effect, this cartoon painterly effect, and how it can be applied to, say, this picture here. Now, it can be used on any picture. In fact, all the pictures that I've used on in my portfolio, if I could, I'd probably go back and do this. But like I said, it was destructive, so I can't go back and do it. But this is now how I'm doing it. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, hopefully on your screens you can see this if you've, if you've made this video player larger. This is the picture without it. And if I zoom in, uh, you'll see that there's, you know, you can see all the detail in the car, but you can also see quite a bit of noise in the sky. And it's just kind of like, you know, I could stop at this point, but I do like to add that painterly look. So when the picture has had that look added, this is how it looks like. So now we zoom in, the clouds are nice and soft. They've got that kind of painting look. Even the the... the tufts of grass, the trees in the background, and the car as well has got a much smoother feel to it, but it's still got sharpness. Okay, so how do we do it? What do we do then? I'm in the develop module here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the detail tab, which is where you'll find the sharpening and the noise reduction. And all I'm going to do is I'm gonna just focus on the noise reduction part here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the luminance slider and take it all the way up to 100. Now when I do that and zoom in, what you'll notice is that yes, it's got that kind of painterly cartoon look to it, but all the kind of like the sharpness has gone. So like, for example, on this front tire here, you can no longer see the tread in the tire. So obviously that's a really important part of it. We don't want it to be completely smooth. We still need to have an element of sharpness. So to bring some of that back, what I can do is, again, in the noise reduction part of the details tab, we've got the detail slider. So I can drag this slider, and that basically tells Lightroom to start bringing back some of the detail. Not all of it, because I want to keep that painterly look. But if I just bring it over, and I'm going to go for, say, around about 60. Now the great thing is, whereas before, when I didn't move the detail slider, you couldn't see sharpness. Now, and again, hopefully on your screens you'll see it, now we can start to see sharpness. So for example, the tread in the tire has come back, and that's great. So that's allowing me to do this very quickly and very easily. And obviously this is kind of like non-destructive. And because we can do it in Lightroom, obviously we can do it in Camera Raw because they're the same kind of engine. However, there is an advantage to doing this in Camera Raw. Now, this is only because of how I like to do it, so you might not want to see any difference, but for me, there's definitely an advantage of doing this in Camera Raw because generally, once I've created this cartoon effect, I always feel that it kind of flattens down the contrast just a little bit. So I like to add some contrast in, and I do that using the Unsharp Mask Filter. So, and I, and I like the Unsharp Mask Filter, which I've explained before, because it's a, a great way of adding contrast, because it, it, for one thing, it doesn't give you any kind of color shift. Sometimes you can see that when you're doing contrast, but also it doesn't add any halos when you really crank it up. So it's a brilliant way of adding contrast. If I wanted to do this now, once I've done the effect in Lightroom, I would then have to go to Photo, Edit In, and I would um, go to, um, 
smart objects in Photoshop because again I'm thinking of being non-destructive and there's no problem with doing this way but for me it's just another step of having to do it so now if I show you how I'm doing it in Photoshop let's just say in fact let's just turn this layer into a smart object so imagine now that I've done all my retouching and then what I've done is like I showed in, a, in an episode or in fact it was on a video on my channel called the power of smart objects I think it was called or the secret of smart objects um, let's just say that I've done all my retouching and all the layers to this point I've, I've kind of put all together and nested into one smart object. So if I double clicked on this, I'd then see all the layers. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that cartoon painted look to this image here. And you'll see in a moment the advantage. So just like in Camera Raw, I'm going to go to the uh, develop part of the, uh, sorry, just like in Lightroom, I'm going to go to the develop part over here now. And uh, so I'm going to go to the Detail tab, Noise Reduction like before, whack it up to uh, 100, and then the Luminance slider, probably around about 60, just to bring back the detail in the tread on the tires. So no difference now. But if I just click OK, I'm still in Photoshop. I'm not going anywhere else. I'm now going to go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask, and then I'm going to add my... Uh, my unshot mask contrast where we have a high radius and a high amount to give me that contrast and I can do that on and off and you can probably see the effect just there now you know there's obviously being Photoshop there's so many ways that you can do this but for me this really does suit my way of working because it allows me to apply the cartoon effect non-destructively so I can obviously if I wanted to I could come back over to the layers here double click on the camera raw part here on the uh, smart filter to go back into camera raw and just tweak that cartoonish kind of look but also on the same smart filter here I can apply my contrast again non-destructively so there you go it's just another tool to your Photoshop tool bag I'm not saying that one way is right and one way is wrong it's just what suits your workflow but I just thought I'd throw this video together because I've just finished doing this uh, Aston Martin uh, retouch which incidentally I'm going to put up on my uh, website as a full downloadable tutorial so you can see how you take the out of camera shot which is considerably different to the one you can see now to the final image which you probably see over on my uh, Lightroom page or actually it's on my 500px page so if you go over to my 500px page which is just uh, 500px.com forward slash Glyndewis and you'll see the picture just there okay Right, uh, I'll see you next time. Actually, just one more thing before I disappear. If you haven't already, make sure you click on the subscribe button that you can see on screen right now. And that'll mean that you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you'll be notified of any new content that I post out. So you'll get to know about the latest episodes of my photography, Photoshop and Lightroom podcast, as well as any extra videos that I throw out there as well, just like the one that you're watching now. Okay, that's all for this time. I'll see you soon.